Good morning, and the Lord be with you. Well, uh, I'm, I'm living proof that the angel tree uh, does work uh, because I got my razors this morning. So, um, uh, yes, yes, uh, maybe a little bit after the fact, but uh, so God be praised that uh, people are uh, demonstrating love by taking names and following through. Uh, welcome one and all, especially those who are visiting uh, with us uh, this morning as we continue our uh, Advent uh, experience. Uh, last week we received an Advent letter from the Apostle Paul. He had first directed it to a, a congregation, uh, a church of, of believers in Thessalonica, and uh, we have a second letter from him, a second Advent letter, and you'll hear more about that. It was first uh, written to a uh, to, to Christians in uh, Philippi, but it certainly applies to us here in Marshfield and, and beyond. So God be with you as you hear his word this morning.
It comes from heaven above. Its rule is peace and freedom and justice, truth and love. So let your prayers be sounding for kindness so In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered here once again in this Advent season to hear God's word and to call upon him with our praises and our prayers and receive the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from this, the fellowship of his altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have all sinned in thought, in word, and in deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. And so together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace once again for the sake of Christ, and together saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And together we confess, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And indeed, God desires to lead us all unto everlasting life because Almighty God in his mercy has sent to you and to me his one and only Son, and for his sake, he forgives us all our sins. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. And the walk in my face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. The Lord be with you. And we pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, who is one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the, I the Lord do not change. Therefore you, 
O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John the baptizer said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
Well, good morning, boys and girls. Thanks for coming up. Happy Advent and happy Thanksgiving. Did you all have a good Thanksgiving? Did you? Did you find yourselves thankful? Yeah, you know, yeah, kind of, maybe. All right. Well, let's review that then. What, um, what, what are some things you're, you're thankful for? Yes, Kevin. Your birthday. When was your birthday? On the 26th, was that Thanksgiving? Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, what are you thankful for? On the 25th, another birthday. A lot of November birthdays here. Yes, Jasmine. For the food, yeah. All right, Thank, yeah, what are you thankful for? For your health. You know what I haven't heard yet? Is anybody saying they're thankful for... Legos. Well, this is a Lego person for persons. Yeah, you can be thankful for Legos, but I brought this Lego person because the Apostle Paul says that in one of his uh, letters to, to people whom he really cared for and loved because they were, they were Christians with him in church, uh, he said he was very thankful for them, for people. So who's, who's somebody you're thankful for? That, that, who are you thankful for? Yeah, for mom. Yeah, I could tell because I saw you hugging her uh, when you came in this morning. Here's somebody else. Who, who are you thankful for? For dad? Yeah. And anybody, who else are you thankful for? Yeah, we could go on and on and, and hopefully fill up this jar with people that we're thankful for. Now, another thing that Paul said was that being thankful for people, that uh, uh, he, he knew that the people in this church uh, were loving people, uh, but, but he, he knew too that, that they could never be too loving. And so he said, I, I give thanks to God for you. I give thanks for God, to God for you. But um, I also pray that you'll do more and more loving things. So let's pretend, I got more Legos here. All right, and let's pretend each one of these um, is, is a loving thing you can do. What's a loving thing you can do? Yeah. Build oh, build people's houses. You know, that's like Habitat for Humanity. I don't know if you know what that is, but that happens here in Marshfield where somebody, group of people, builds a house for somebody who can't build it for themselves. So let's put that in there. Is there any more loving things? What's a loving thing? What, what's that? Oh, the, oh, like building the person's stairs in the house? Yeah, building different things. Okay. What, um, what if somebody's sad? Is there anything loving you can do? Hug. You can give them a hug. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, how many, can we ever do too many loving things? No. Do you think we can do if each one of these... Uh, we pretend they're a loving thing we do. Do you think we would get it to where it was overflowing? Yeah. But here's the thing. You know, what makes you so sure, or a fancy word is confident, what makes you sure that, that it's worth loving other, being thankful for people and doing all these loving things? What reason do you have to be so sure that it's all a good thing? There's one more thing I've got here that Paul talked about. It's this right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the cross. And so with all those people that we love or and are thankful for and all those things that we would do for them and for others and do it more and more and more, Paul says, oh, that's what I'm most thankful for. And that's what makes me really confident and sure about things is knowing that behind it all and the reason we do it is right here, the cross, because that shows us how thankful God is for us and how much he loves us that he made sure he was going to send his son to make sure that when Jesus comes back again, we are going to be in his heavenly church forever and ever. All right, well, thanks for helping out, but let's pray first. Oh, I almost forgot. The Advent, we can't forget the Advent candle. Remember, come up here. And uh, so 
let's, let's, last week we lit the hope candle. Now we just talked about, Paul, Paul talked about thanksgiving and being sure and about be, uh, abounding or growing in love. Is there a candle here that any of you see might talk about thanksgiving or being sure or love? Which candle is it? There is one up there. We got a cross, but which one is it? There, ah, it says what? Love. love. Okay, did you light this last week? Oh, we should get somebody else to light the love candle. Oh, Kevin. All right, the only condition to lighting the love candle is that I can lift you up so you can light it. All right, or we need somebody tall. Oh, no, not that. That's where the love candle's right over here. Can you light that? Oh, I think he can. Oh, all right, here, I want to give you a little boost. Oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, you got it, buddy. Okay, excellent. All right, super. Good job. So now we got two candles and three more to go, and it's coming. Okay, let's pray. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for the people you give us who are your gifts and help us to grow more and more in showing love that shows your love for us and all. In your name we pray. Amen. And God's advent grace and mercy and peace be yours this day as we have opportunity to receive yet another advent letter. It's wonderful to get cards and letters this time of year. And sure enough, we have one from the Apostle Paul. Well, I'm guessing you all know what TLC stands for. Tender loving care, right? Tender loving care. Well, 
Here's Paul's TLC that I noted reading through his letter once again that he first wrote to some friends, church members, Christians in a place called Philippi. He knew TLC as, read it with me, Thanksgiving, love, and confidence. Yeah. It's a tender, kind-hearted thing to give thanks. And this is Paul's Thanksgiving. Looking at the first letter in this acronym, T, Thanksgiving. Read it with me. I thank my God every time I remember you. Did you see how it was for the kids just a moment ago? And I think it can be the same for us adults too. You know, when, when, we, when we are asked or we give thought to what are we thankful for, we, we think about things. You know, we think about food. We, we think about homes. Maybe we think about jobs. Maybe we think of Hail Mary passes, you know. <laughs> but Paul, Paul, he wasn't thinking in his prayers about things, but it was people. Which people? This happens to be people in a church. Paul was thankful for these church folks in Philippi. And Paul's TLC starts with telling the Philippians, he told them himself how thankful he was for them. Did anybody I uh, greet you this morning and say, oh, hey, Joe, I am so thankful for you. Wow. That would bring people to church, I would imagine. He loved the people in this church. That's clear from his Advent letter to them. And they loved him by the support that they gave him. He talks about this in his letter to them. He, whether he was planting churches, which Paul was known to do, or whether he was in jail because he was planting churches. They never ceased to express their love for Paul, and Paul never ceased to express and give thanks for his love for them. Uh, they, they sent him gifts of money when he was in need, and they didn't have to. He didn't beg for it. It was just something they did, but above all, Paul makes it perfectly clear why he was thankful for what he was thankful for in these people of Philippi. It was for the partnership that they shared together in the gospel. That's the thing that drove Paul's love for these people. They were partners in the gospel, the good news of Christ. Christ for the world and Christ being this world's rescue. Not only for the Philippians, but for all people. So this is why Paul gave thanks for people when he prayed because he understood people to be gifts, the great gifts of God. You know, one of the things that uh, I've come to appreciate over the, the years of, um, of, of ministry and doing funerals is I'm um, taking in the display of photos. You know, it never used to be that way. I remember when I first came into ministry, that uh, I don't ever remember people putting up in the narthex. I don't know, maybe that was something that was looked down, photos of the person for whom we were about to conduct that funeral service. But now so often you see that in the narthex, even at the funeral home. A family will, will ask, can we bring photos to display, to share with others. And usually what I do is I get robed up and I, I then meet with the family and then everybody gets ushered in. And as that's happening, I like to go just by myself before those photos and then take them in. And I see photos of, of that, that individual uh, growing up sometimes. Sometimes I see photos of, of that person with family uh, in, in a Christmas setting, the Christmas tree in the background. Sometimes I see photos that uh, depict that person uh, doing uh, an activity or at an event that, that they enjoyed. Well, it seems to be a lot of photos of that person before Lambeau Field or something like that, or in a Green Bay, you know, Jersey. That's, that's quite typical. And, and, and then sometimes I see photos of that person um, when they were confirmed standing there in their confirmation robe with their confirmation class. Sometimes I see a photo of the person standing before an, an altar and they've got their arm around somebody whom they've just made their vows to. Sometimes there's photos capturing that person doing something for, for others, maybe at home or maybe even in the church. 
remember seeing a photo of, of a, a gal of whose funeral we were about to do, and she's clearly standing with others in a church kitchen serving or doing something in the community. And viewing those photos of that person before we go in and do that service reminds me of what that service is all about. It's a service of praise and what? Thanksgiving. For what? For the gift of God in that person. And through the tears, through the heartache, in light of the loss, there is, there is that, that gratitude for this person as gift. But there's even more gratitude that I sense and sometimes hear when those gathered also know that person not only as having been a gift of God, but as having been somebody who was a partner with them in the gospel. It's not just a funeral service, it's a Christian funeral service. And with that partnership comes that confidence in knowing that that gift that we mourn over at the moment is, is yet something that gives us confidence knowing that we're going to be together again someday because of God's gift of bringing us back together in that place we refer to as heaven or paradise, the gift that's been made possible by Jesus. And that brings us to the, the C part of, in Paul's letter, his TLC Advent letter, and it's confidence. And Paul, Paul was confident. He was confident that, that he would be with the Philippians again. Maybe not in this life, but at the end. And in his mind, that was when Christ would return. And Paul was confident that Jesus would keep them until that time in faith. He would keep them in, in the church together where they especially would, would hear of the Savior and his promises of return until that great day of the resurrection of all flesh. And he says that Jesus would be the one who would, who would keep at this good work that he had begun in them and make sure it would be brought to completion. Do you, know, do you, know, do you notice what, why Paul was so confident? In a word, Jesus. Jesus was the source of his confidence. Are you confident? You find yourself confident? I mean, uh, we get this uh, magazine from our synodical headquarters. It's called The uh, Reporter. And I noticed looking through it this past week, seven Missouri Synod congregations just closed. Ah, not much of a confidence builder. Uh, the congregation I vickered at in Houston, Texas, is no more. Closed. Neighborhood changed from one group of people to another. Doors were shut down. Hardly a confidence uh, builder. At the hospital here in town, I've noticed with the census reports, more and more people who are admitted, when they're asked what their religious affiliation is, you know what they say? None. None. Wow, that seems to shatter confidence. 20 years ago, this congregation was worshiping uh, over the course of a weekend over 600 people. Now we're doing good if we get 300 people on a weekend. And we're expected to be confident. Paul says, yes, yes. And this is how he puts it. Read it with me. Being confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yeah. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. It's not all riding on your shoulders or mine. He is your confidence. And how so? By how he began that good work in you. So what's the good work that he began in you? Making you a mega church? No. No. The good work he began and completed <laughs> here. This is our source of confidence. That cross. Because there he did what? He began and he completed forgiveness. Forgiveness. And where there's forgiveness, there's life. And there's eternal life. What he began when he left that empty grave and then rose again in order to, to set in place that day when you would be buried and raised up again with him in your baptism. That's the good work that Paul is talking about that Christ began and he has completed and he's still completing if you want to think of it that way. It's what Jesus will do in his second advent. We're all looking forward to Christmas and his first advent. 
but being confident that he's going to come back and what he's going to do is he's going to bring your body up out of the grave so that it will live in his never-ending glorious day. Paul knows that and he wants you to know that because he knows that's the only thing that's going to keep you confident. While more people say that religion really doesn't factor into it or while churches are being closed. There's no reason not to remain confident. Oh, and what stands be between the T and the C? What stand, what's the fulcrum? What's right in the middle? Thanksgiving, confidence in the middle. What is it? Love. Yeah, it works. And here's how Paul put it. Let's read it. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Paul was not telling his friends and those he loved in the church in Philippi that they were not loving people. He knew that they were loving people. The Spirit isn't saying to Emmanuel congregation in school and child care center that, that we're an unloving people. Maybe some, somebody might look at us and say, ah, oh, they don't care. They're not loving there. Oh, there's love. There's love. But what Paul is getting at is, is there room for more? Is there room for more? That jar, can more be put into it? Absolutely. And he's not referring to fi uh, filling it up with the feeling of love. People leave churches because they don't feel it. He's referring to love as verb, as action, as that's what's done, whether it's felt or not. The, the, the thing that's, that's the, the, the motivation to why we do what we do, it's, it's that love, that unconditional, undeserving love that grows more and more in the knowledge and the insight that what is being done is God's will. Not, my, not your will, God's will. And, and, and what will this love look like on the last day? I can tell you what it won't look like because that's what scripture does. It won't look like tears. That love won't look like that. It won't look like hunger. It's not going to look like pain. It's not going to look like sickness. It certainly isn't going to look like death. It's not going to look like loneliness or fear. So how does it, how can it look more and more like that now? Well, you know somebody in tears? Even the kids figured this out. Give them a hug. Maybe you don't have to say anything. Just listen. Ah, getting closer and closer to perfect love, that day of perfect love. Did you see all the love here the last couple weeks in grocery bags? Wow, all kinds of love. People who have giving to others who don't have, bringing us closer and closer, growing in perfect love. Oh, how about uh, somebody who's in pain? Right, you can give them a Band-Aid, that's what a parent does for a child. Or maybe you can give the band-aid of a listening ear to somebody. Listening isn't all that easy. But it's important. And it does something for those who are hurting. Brings them closer and closer to that experience that's promised to come of no more pain. Or have you ever worn a pink ribbon? Why does anybody wear a pink ribbon? Because you're motivated by by love that wants to do something about a terrible disease. But it doesn't have to be a pink ribbon, it can be any number of things that provide support and, and, and effort toward doing something with, with these diseases that, dis, that destroy the gift that God gives to us in people. But when there is death, I know there's been love by people bringing meals. Or how about this? Kind of when everything has settled after that service for a loved one, funeral service, a month or two down the road, picking up the phone, how you doing? Getting closer and closer, abounding in love. Or Deb Mueller's got these cards out here. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever signed your name to one of those for somebody who maybe is lonely? All right? Yeah coming closer and closer to no more loneliness? Or how about getting involved in something that, man, I don't know, I, I'm kind of afraid to do that, but giving it a shot anyway, coming closer and closer to no more fear. 
I mean, we can go on and on, can't you? And you give it thought, as Paul says, to abound more and more in love with this knowledge and insight that it's all about building up the body of Christ in preparation for his second coming. All examples of coming closer and closer and knowing that as we do participate in continuing acts of love, it builds confidence, comes from confidence, and it just begins to fill and overflow with thanksgiving mutually. So see, it is about TLC, isn't it? TLC is, read it with me, thanksgiving, love, confidence in Christ because God so loved you that he gave his one and only son to be the reason why you would, and I too, would abound more and more in love. And now the peace which surpasses all our understanding, may it keep and guard our hearts and minds. In, in Paul's TLC letter here to us, in thanksgiving, confidence, and holding it all up, love. Amen. Almighty God, for those whom you have given us as gift, as your gift, to loved ones and friends, we are thankful. And forgive us when we take them for granted and we aren't thankful for the opportunities you give us to abound more and more in love toward those with tears, those who are hungry, those in pain, the sick, the grieving, those who are alone and the fearful. We are thankful. And above all, for the source of our confidence, which comes from the good work that your son has accomplished for us by his death and resurrection, we remain hopeful and firm in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those who rule and govern, protect those who serve in the military, especially Aaron Potapenko and Daniel Kraft, J.J. Glaman, Joshua Rothscheid, Johnny Sheppa, Dan Sheila. Dan Sheely, that is, Radley uh, Stadinaras, Troy Wilman, and A.J. Zwicky. Provide for those who have no work, heal the sick, and comfort the suffering, especially those receiving hospice care, Oren and Rose, and others, Linda Behrens and Brad Hofferman, Rita Klasinski, Gladys Lass, Robert Hainslisberger, Amy Rogenbauer, and Helen Ott. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as you gave yourself for the forgiveness of sins, grant that we may receive your body and blood with sincere faith and confidence in your word and promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, it is into your hands that we commend all for whom we pray, for all the church, for ourselves, for friends and neighbors, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who does live and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, who is one God, now and forever. Amen. Keep us confident and thankful, Lord, as you continue to lovingly teach us to pray together the prayer you have given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after they had supped, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Thank you very much. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Hark the glad sound of Savior.